Hi everyone and welcome back to Stitchy Bee. I'm Cheryl. Okay, in my last video I picked out some beautiful white cotton drill and I plan to make some white jeans or white trousers. Well, occasionally we do have a bit of a fabric fail in the fabric industry and all three bolts were flawed so I couldn't use that fabric. It was from a really good quality supplier too. So I've got an alternative um, to make my white jeans and I'll show you them. So I'm wearing my trusty Ogden cami which I made last year. There's a video on that if you want to find it on my channel. I'll pop a link underneath as well. And it's the perfect thing for this time of year. Um, I actually look a bit tanned, but it's just the garden. It's been quite nice here, so um, I've been enjoying the sunshine. So, Ogden top, and on the bottom, I've made some sew over it mirror jeans. And you can't see them that well on the video, so I'll pop some stills up here so you can see a, a closer look. And this was one of the patterns on my Make Nine list uh, that I made back in January. And I kind of had at the back of my mind that I'd like to make a white pair. Um, I've got a couple of ready to wear white jeans um, and they get lots of wear at this time of year with a, a top like this. Um, and I'm fairly careful with the old white clothing. So I know it's not for everybody, but I really like it. So the first thing I did was I looked at the pattern and I've not made jeans before, but I made those grain line maritime shorts, which were very similar in construction, I think. And the only differences are there's no top stitching on those. So uh, the mere jeans pattern comes as part of the Sew Over It City Break ebook, and it's one of those patterns in there. Um, and I had it to make because I bought the ebook, and I, I don't think I made anything from that, um, apart from the Molly top. So I'm trying to be more frugal and not just keep buying. So forgive me for sewing lots of sew over it things, but it, they're all in my stash and I need to get through them. So um, first tip I can give you with the Mir jeans, the lay plan is actually printed on the PDF pattern sheet, the A4 one to print out. I looked everywhere and I couldn't work out why I couldn't find it. So it's not in the instruction booklet that you get with it, the PDF. It's actually on the PDF pattern to save your hunting. So I cut two meters of this fabric and I'll show you it first. So this is the fabric I've got as an alternative. I ordered this back in January and as luck should have it, it just arrived as I had to return the other one. So it's far superior actually. It's a slub, so it's got a texture and it's a stretchy cotton denim. Now it's not stretchy, um, vertically it's it's stretchy horizontally and also on the bias I wouldn't say this is the best fabric for super skinny spray on jeans because it is as you can see it's fairly substantial I've put the weight of it on my site as well so it's a medium weight it's not a lightweight really and it's just got plenty of body to give you some structure to garments so it's good for looser slim fit jeans and trousers and skirts and that's what I'd choose it for having worked with it. It does fray a little on the edges so when you're working with it you could always overlock um, this before you wash it um, just to keep it all together um, but it's not too much of a problem for a denim and you can see close up there it's got little textures. Okay, so back to the pattern. So the lay plan is on the PDF. Forgive me for looking at my notes. Also, um, I changed the pockets on the plan as well. So I noticed on the picture um, on Lisa Comfort that the pockets look a little bit small and Lisa's quite tiny and I'm thinking if the pockets look small on Lisa's bum then they'll look minute on mine. So I increased the pocket size and how I did that was literally just to add a centimetre all the way around the edge. So they're funny shaped pockets, they've got a little bit of an angle to them on one side. So I've just got the ruler out, put dots where one centimetre is around the edge and then created a larger template. Also with the pattern comes with um, a cardboard template which creates um, a template for you to fold over the seam allowance on the pockets so that you can prepare them properly. So you'll need to remember if you change the pocket piece, you'll need to change the template as well. 
I didn't actually use that in the end because I found it easier just to turn over a centimetre and press that on its own without using um, the template itself. Okay, so one of the good things about sewing pockets on jeans is that you can go crazy with the pattern or not or create something really plain. Now there's a lot of top stitching on this jeans pattern um, which is fairly standard for jeans isn't it because you've got the twin needle um, that goes down the sides or the insides and round the seat uh, around the seam at the back so be mindful of that so if you're not confident top stitching you can simply use the same color thread as your fabric and um, I wanted to create a little bit of um, a pattern but I didn't want to stitch myself up with doing everything in a contrasting thread so on the back pocket for mine I sewed you can't see it here so I'll, I'll pop a close-up here for you I cracked open the fancy stitches on my new sewing machine and I said a lovely little Greek key pattern just across the top um, but remember to prep your pockets as per the instructions before you sew them onto the the jeans themselves that's one of the earlier stages so it's a nice little project to do in an evening so maybe you could just concentrate on the pockets on their own okay um the other thing i did which is a bit rash <laughs> as i started to make it i thought oh it's a bigger project than i want and i wanted something fast so i omitted the waistband and i've replaced it with elastic so i've had some i think it's two inch elastic in my stash for ages i think i'd planned to put it in some pajamas and i thought what if I just sewed that onto the waistband instead? Because I've actually got some ready to wear ones. Um, I think they're from Georgia Astor and I've lived in them, they're brilliant. I thought, well, I could recreate them because they've worked really well. So um, what I did was before then, you need to think about the fly. I didn't want a zip and a fly in either. The only jean zip I had was navy blue and I didn't really want to risk um, attaching that to a pure white fabric. So I thought, okay, let's make some jeggings instead. So I looked up a tutorial online and it's really simple how to do it. I'll show you what I did. So here's the piece, uh, the pattern piece for the front leg. So to create the faux fly effect, what you need to do is take the zip facing piece, which is piece E on this pattern, and remove a century a centimeter and a half of the seam allowance which I didn't so mine ended up being a bit wide because I didn't take into account that would usually be gone that centimeter and a half so chop a centimeter and a half off this piece along the longest edge and then tape it exactly on the edge of the jeans piece and then I'll pop a link to the tutorial underneath so you can see how I've done it but what it does is it just creates that jegging effect so that you can pull them on pull them off the fabric's stretchy enough to go over your hips and um, I would say don't make them too skin tight um, for that reason if you're going to make jeggings it does require a little bit of a leap of faith um, but thankfully it worked in this case because on this pattern there's two and a half centimetres of seam allowance down the outside of the jeans themselves not the rest of it that's 1.5 but that's handy because it makes fitting a lot easier and I think I've probably used most of that so the fabric um, sorry the patterns fairly true to size so I made a size 14 and um, it fits beautifully and then I tapered it in a little bit more on the leg at the bottom but I needn't have I think it's sometimes they're nicer being a slim fit rather than a skinny fit um, and you don't want it too tight and restrictive at the back of your knees so just test that before you go in and further in um, depending on which fabric you use so yeah I'm quite pleased with them I think they're really nice for summer it's made a really quick and easy pull on um, garment to wear and I definitely try it again. I've got some lightweight denim that I call skinny denim um, on the sides. And I think it'll work quite nice in that pale one that I've got. And that's a little bit more forgiving than this fabric. Um, but this is really beautiful. And I think this would work really well um, as a skirt. I think there's a tilly in the buttons. Is it the Miette skirt? I can't remember, but I've, I've got a couple of her earlier patterns and I'm thinking, yes. 
that would be nice or there's a new denim skirt that I've seen by itch to stitch I'll pop a link to that below that would look beautiful um, in this fabric as well so it's great I mean if you want to do full-on jeans with the button and the fly and the waistband go for it there's nothing too tricky about it the only thing I'd say with this ebook is that the resolution is not brilliant on the actual instructions so I kept wanting to zoom in but when you zoom in it fades a bit uh, gets a bit hazy so I think it'd be helpful if they had a little bit more of high resolution on the instructions so that you can zoom in on the close-ups but it's fairly fairly simple I wouldn't say it's a beginner pattern and the other thing which was a bit awkward was there's a lot of top stitching mid sewing so it meant I had to keep changing from my twin needle to my single needle all the time so if you've got two sewing machines and you could set one up for each one for plain sewing and one for the top stitching that will make your life immensely easier um, unlike me who I was just using one at a time and I was like oh <laughs> taking the needle out again and then putting a single one in so yeah that's a another thing to look out for and it didn't help the fact that I broke my overlock and needle actually halfway through so I've not finished off the insides so this is a bit of a twelve for me um, which I'm a bit gutted about because I really like the pockets and the, I got them just in the right place but hey ho that's sewing for you isn't it okay a little quick one then for, for me for this week next time I'm gonna make myself an off-the-shoulder top I haven't decided which pattern yet I've got a couple um, but I'm dying to use some of my drapey jersey and um, I've got a couple actually I've got you saw this one last week this is a Lady McElroy um, rose print I, I, I'm not sure if this is a bit far for that because it's a bit like La Bonita is so yeah maybe it's a bit too much or I could go uber classy and have the monochrome stripes which I think would work well because on the frills you could have a down stripe and on the rest you could have a horizontal and I think that's a nice way of using a simple fabric to create a little bit of drama and it's a bit less flamenco isn't it so yeah we'll see about that you'll probably see me in the, the flamenco one next time won't you so yeah I'll record that for you um soon so you'll see that uploaded next week okay um lovely to see you let me know your comments and thoughts and if you've got any requests of things you'd like me to make and sew or fabric you'd like me to review um then let me know okay on to the closer look at fabric quickly before i go okay this week's closer look at fabric is all about french terry so french terry is a type of sweatshirt fabric and this is a sample here for you. I don't have this one in stock, but it's just a sample to give you an idea. So that's a light gray. And traditionally on the back, you'll see these little loops. And often in some retail shops or online, it's called loop back jersey or loop back sweat, but it's usually called French Terry. Now this one's got big loops. So it's the kind of thing you'd expect a hoodie to be made from. And this is one that I've just got in stock, which is really beautiful and lighter weight than that one with smaller loops. So I'll show you the reverse up close. There you go. That's the behind of that one. And you can hardly see them. So this is a lot more drapey, a little bit, and um, this is a lot more expensive for fabric than the other one. And this would be great for a children's fabric or for a more of a lighter weight hoodie, something you might wear to the beach um, or want a big cover up in. I can imagine the kind of thing you get changed in when you've been in the sea, um, in this country anyway, because it's fa fairly warm. Um, but yeah, I really like this one. I've got a couple of bolts of this. I originally bought this to turn into um, the Stella hoodie from uh, Tilly's book Stretch and I've also but I've also fallen in love with an amazing sweatshirt fabric with a fleece back 
um, that I'm saving to make because it's a little bit hot to be making sweatshirts at the moment and hoodies. So um, I'll do that in a couple of weeks as um, the weeks go on or a couple of, couple more videos time so that maybe preparing for autumn time. But for now, this is on the site, this one. So this is a French terry and I'll call this candy pink, um, which is really, really beautiful. So yeah, there you go. It's um, largely cotton. Um, depends. They usually have stretch. So this one's 96% cotton, 4% spandex, which gives it the stretch and it has a, a good recovery. So anything like this, you do want a bit of spandex in so that it bounces back. If it's all cotton, like an interlock, that's the kind of thing you'd imagine men's vests to be made from in Marks and Spencers, that type of thing, where it's gorgeous and soft next to the skin. But for a hoodie, you'd want something with a little bit more um, recovery in so that it pings back. Okay, I hope you found that helpful. And that's this week's Further Look at Fabric. All right then, I'll see you next time um, with my lace lab on eater top or whatever I decide. And hopefully that'll be a quickie, a nice quick make, which I'm a massive fan of at the moment because as you know, I've got no time. <laughs> okay, lovely to see you. Let me know your comments below and give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And I'll see you next time. Take care, bye for now. Mm -hmm.